Welcome back everyone to the Hello World Guide, this is another episode of the Raycaster game in C++ series and in this video we are going to be adding sprites to our game. So this is going to be a pretty fun video. So first of all I have already gone ahead and created a sprite.h file which just consists of a basic class called sprite which consists of a just a vector 2f representing the position of the sprite right now. It does not uh, contain any other attributes but we'll add more attributes to this as we need them. So first of all I'm gonna open up render.h and of course we want to draw our sprites. Now uh, we need to figure out how we are gonna store our uh, sprites and I figured that a vector uh, of uh, sprites actually would be quite enough. So we are gonna call this sprites and we are going to take this as a const reference to prevent unnecessary copying. So const std vector sprite and uh, this way we'll be able to use this vector to draw all of our sprites in the 3D view as well. Uh, of course, I'm gonna go under open up uh, my render.cpp and in here you can see that it's giving me a error because uh, uh, I need to change the uh, this here as well. So std vector of sprite uh, and sprite uh, like that. And with that we have got our render here and uh, we just need to add the sprite drawing functionality to this function here. So I'm gonna go to the very end of this when we have drawn all of our walls and in here we are going to start with our sprite drawing function. Uh, but before we do that let me open up main.cpp and uh, inside of this you can see that uh, well, we have got uh, nothing really of that much importance here except that uh, now we need to provide it with that uh, the actual you know vector to the sprites so for that I'm gonna go here and I'm going to create an std vector of sprite which we are just gonna call sprites and we are going to set this equal to uh, well for the first sprite we will just pass in the position at uh, 2.5 on both axes and uh, currently of course it has no other attributes but this is going to be our first uh, thing and we are going to go here and say sprite here and pass that to the drawing function. Now of course currently just running make to make sure everything actually works and you can see nothing changes because of course we are not actually drawing the sprite. But what, uh, what I am going to do now is that uh, I am going to go here. And in here we are going to run another for loop. Uh, this is going to be a range based for loop. So we are going to go over each sprite and draw those one by one. So for sprite in our sprites we are going to go through each of those. And uh, now we need to essentially just draw the sprite. So in order to draw the sprite the first thing we need to do is we need to get the sprite. Uh, we are going to get the sprite position here. So we are going to say sprite position and this is going to be the sprite's position relative to the camera or the player. So we are going to say sprite dot position minus player dot uh, player dot position like that. And this will give us our sprite position as a vector 2 and now we need to uh, transform this into camera space. Now if you remember our camera matrix we need to you know transform this into camera space so our uh, camera matrix is like this but we need to actually get the inverse of the camera matrix in order to transform this correctly so uh, our camera matrix uh, is basically like this so it's plane.x and uh, direction.x and in here it's plane.y it's basically a 2 by 2 matrix and direction.y now we need to calculate the inverse of this as I said and now for calculating the inverse of uh, uh, anything is basically the inverse of the determinant multiplied by the adjoint of the matrix. So that's a pretty you know basic rule of for uh, you know getting the uh, inverse of a matrix. And the adjoint here is defined as uh, you need to just uh, uh, you know switch the places of the diagonal element. So direction dot y, and uh, you need to negate other elements. So we are going to say negative direction dot x here, and in here we are going to say negative plane dot y because this is not the direct, uh, this is not the diagonal one and this is the diagonal one so we replaced it with uh, direction dot y went up there so now we are gonna get plane dot x here like that and uh, we are gonna uh, save this and uh, yeah with that we have got like a uh, this is going to be the inverse of our matrix now we as I said we need to transform our uh, you know sprite position into this space so uh, for the transformed position we need to multiply our sprite position with this matrix so uh, if you know that uh, uh, well we can just say this matrix here uh, one by that multiplied by the determinant by the way and uh, it's gonna be our direction dot y and uh, minus direction dot x uh, negative direction dot x and in here it's gonna be negative plane dot y and plane dot 
ads like that and this is uh, like our basic uh, matrix but uh, we need to multiply this by our sprite position so uh, for that we can just uh, you might know if you are programmed in graphics before that we generally take vectors as uh, column matrices so basically a matrix that's uh, like has got only one column and uh, two rows consisting of the x and the y and we just need to multiply these together so for that we need to uh, well we can say that the you know actual uh, a value of this will be uh, we of course need to have one by that here uh, the determinant and uh, for the actual value of this we are gonna say there dot y multiplied by this x uh, multiplied by x plus our uh, actually minus because it's negative so there dot x uh, minus there dot x uh, multiplied by our y this is going to be the one at the top and uh, uh, you know the top uh, row and for the bottom row we are going to do it pretty similarly we are going to but we are going to say negative plane dot y multiplied by x so negative plane dot y multiplied by x um, we are going to add to this because plane dot x is positive we are going to add plane dot x multiplied by y like that and uh, that will uh, yeah, that's pretty much it that's the way we need to calculate our transformed uh, position so with that you can quite clearly see that this will give us our x and this bottom one will give us our y so we can just calculate this directly without having to actually form any matrix data structure or something of that sort so we are going to create an ss vector to f which we are going to call transformed like that and uh, for this we are going to fill the x value and the y value like that but first of all we need to actually calculate the determinant so for a, a 2d matrix you might know that the determinant is just like this diagonal one so plane dot x multiplied by direction dot y minus plane dot y multiplied by direction dot x this will be our determinant but we need to get the inverse of that so we'll go here and create a variable called inverse determinant and uh, we are going to just say plane dot x multiplied by our direction dot y minus plane dot y multiplied by direction dot x and of course all of these variables we have calculated earlier when we were doing wall casting so yeah that's in the start of this function we have calculated the camera plane and the direction and everything so this will give us our determinant but we need to get the inverse of that so we are gonna go here and we are going to just say 1.1 1. 1 divided by this and that will give us the inverse of our determinant that we can use whenever we need to actually multiply this so with that we have got uh, uh, our, our determinant calculated and now we can just calculate uh, the transform value just like we did there so we are going to say direction dot y uh, and uh, actually we need to multiply this by the inverse determinant as well so inverse determinant multiplied by uh, our direction direction dot y multiplied by the sprite position uh, sprite position dot x uh, and we are going to subtract from this our direction dot x multiplied by sprite position dot y uh, like that and we are going to uh, copy and uh, well uh, let us go here and we are going to say inverse determinant multiplied by negative plane dot y multiplied by sprite position dot x uh, plus plane dot x multiplied by sprite position dot y like that and that will give us our transformed uh, you know uh, sprite here correctly so now uh, with this transformed sprite we need to draw this so in order to do that we are going to calculate the actual screen coordinate of this sprite so we are gonna have to calculate that so for that we can just say int screen x which is going to represent the, the x value of the screen and for this we can get our screen width multiply that by actually first divide that by 2 and then multiply that by 1 plus our transform dot y uh, transform dot x by transform dot y and with this camera space transformed uh, you know position this uh, actually the y value actually represents the depth so uh, you know away from the camera so it represents the depth of the actual sprite now with that we have got our screen x here correctly and uh, now we can actually start drawing this for that we are going to calculate another integer variable called draw star which is going to represent the column of the screen in which we are going to start drawing so for that we uh, we can just do it pretty similarly we, uh, simply but first of all we need to actually calculate the sprite size so we are going to say sprite size is equal to 
we are going to take the absolute value here of uh, our screen height uh, and we don't want this to be negative by the way the size so we are going to take absolute value and we are going to take our screen height and divide that by transform dot y as i said uh, this is represents the depth so this will make the sprite get smaller when we go away from it so now we need to get our two more variables which are going to be draw start and draw end which will represent the column we start and end the drawing from so for the draw start we are going to say negative sprite size uh, by 2 plus our screen x so this will mean that our uh, screen x actually represents the center value of the sprite and then we just shift the um, you know the starting is shifted like half towards the left of it and the ending is shifted half towards the right of it so the draw end is going to be very simple uh, similar except that this is going to be positive and we can i'm just going to combine this into a single declaration or perhaps not uh, yeah, like that. We have got um, our draw end and draw start calculated. So now we need to like go actually draw this. So we are going to run a for loop uh, int i is equal to draw start and i is less than draw end and we are going to say i plus plus. Now uh, we are drawing this but uh, one thing I will do is that uh, we don't want to draw our sprite if it's like outside of the screen. Uh, we don't want to start from that, that would be just wasting memory. So we are going to use std max here uh, but the only difference is that we'll uh, you know make sure that it never goes uh, greater than zero. And uh, in here we are going to use std min instead of std max uh, and we are going to make sure it never goes beyond our screen's width. So for that we'll need to cast our screen width to a uh, integer and we'll need to subtract one from that because the last column we don't want that to be filled as that would be like actually going beyond the screen so we'd calculate this and clamp them to the correct values and now uh, in order for the actual drawing we are going to create an sf vertex array here uh, like that which we are just gonna call our uh, let's just call it sprite columns that will represent that each co column of our sprites and uh, you might be wondering why are we drawing the sprites by column instead of like drawing them as a whole since sfml will provide that functionality easier well uh, you'll understand the reason behind this in a second uh, first of all we are uh, we let me just go here and in the end i'm gonna say target dot draw, draw and provide it with the sprite columns like that Alright, so for now for the actual, you know, uh, appending to this sprite columns. So we are going to say, uh, uh, in the loop, we are going to say sprite columns dot append. And we are going to have to append an sf vertex. Uh, actually, yeah, vertex. And now what values do we need to provide for this? Well, first of all, we need to provide the actual position. Uh, and for the position uh, on the x, I am going to just pass in like our uh, i but cast to a float. So we are going to do it like that. Now for the y, we are going to go ahead and get our negative sprite size. So we are going to say negative sprite size. Uh, and then we are going to say divided by 2 plus our screen height divided by 2. And that will give us the correct y value uh, for one of the vertices. And now we are, can just copy that and uh, paste this uh, for the second vertex, which is going to be the same, except this is going to be positive, like that. And uh, now let's try to run this. And what you should see is that... Uh, uh, well, it seems like uh, there has been a small mistake in this Which is that we actually forgot to uh, tell our sprite columns that we wish to render this as lines It was rendering it incorrectly So I'm gonna run make now and what you can see is that we get a white sprite here And the specialty about this is that if I move uh, You can see it's always facing the player and if I move away it gets smaller However, the problem is that we can currently see it through the walls which is uh, of course expected since we are drawing it uh, after everything but there is another problem which is that if i turn around i can see it on the other side as well so it's drawing the sprites that are behind me this one is here and if i turn around it's here as well so how can we prevent this from happening well actually it's uh, very simple we are going to just make sure that the transform depth coordinate which is the y value so the y of the transformed uh, transformed is not negative so we are going to add an if statement here we're going to check if transformed dot y is greater than zero only then will we uh, append this to the column and now if i run this you can see that if i like go in the other direction it no longer appears in the other direction however uh, we can still see it through the walls which is of course not the behavior that we want uh, and 
yeah you can see that i can still see from the walls but it's not avail uh, you know visible on the other side which is pretty good so uh, how can we prevent this from actually being displayed uh, you know ahead of the walls well there could be multiple ways to solve this problem but uh, the z buffer approach is the best one so if you ever program with opengl you know that the z buffer basically keeps track of the depth of each pixel in the screen so that uh, uh, the items that are the furthest away from the player are drawn in the like uh, uh, drawn uh, uh, not at the front so that they are not visible but the items that are like closest to the player are drawn last so in order to uh, have a similar effect ourselves we are gonna go here and we are going to have a new variable here which will be an array of float which we'll just call in, uh, call our z buffer and the size of this will be our, uh, we'll just cast to size underscore t, we'll take our screen width and cast that to size t and this will basically cover our whole screen we don't need one per pixel instead we only need one per vertical stripe of the screen because we are drawing everything as vertical sprites in our raycaster so that's pretty awesome and uh, now when we are drawing our walls we are going to each time we draw the wall we are going to set our z buffers current value to be uh, well perpendicular equal to the perpendicular wall distance and uh, that doesn't seem to work well actually we need to do it here uh, inside of the loop so that will work it will set it um, uh, the z buffer correctly and now we can just perform a simple check and as i said this y is the depth so we can just make sure that our transform dot y is less than the z buffer so if it's greater than the z buffer we won't draw this stripe and that's the reason we uh, drew it as uh, separate vertical columns instead of drawing it all at once so that we can you know if half of the sprite is visible then we show that half and don't show the other so this is the way we'll do that and we just pass in i here so now let me run this and what you should see is that this is our sprite and if i uh, move around and if i move behind a wall the sprite becomes no longer visible and if i move away i cannot see the sprite but if i uh, go here you can see i can see the sprite now so the sprite is inside of the room and you can only see it from inside of the room so yeah that's that's pretty awesome that means that our basic sprite is working now of course we still need to add uh, texture string to the sprite and there are a couple of problems which is that if you have multiple sprites uh, the one uh, some might get drawn on top of others which will be more noticeable when we actually add texturing so we'll do that in the next video make sure to like and subscribe as well and share this video with other people as well and uh, bye